In this video, I will show you how to control a cooling fan with an Arduino. Now, the Arduino itself does not usually get hot enough to need cooling, but along with a temperature sensor, which we cover in the previous video in our Arduino tutorial series that you can find linked in the description of this one, you can use one of these cooling fans and an Arduino to build a system to automatically cool something else. Zooming in to take a look at the fan, this is a two-wire brushless DC fan. So there are also three-wire and four-wire versions of fans like this available. They are commonly used in things like cooling desktop computers. The circuit to control those fans is going to be a little different. This video is specifically about the two-wire fans. So if you have not purchased a fan yet and you want to be able to follow this tutorial, make sure you buy a two-wire fan. You should also see the specs for the fan before you buy it online, or if you look at the text on the label here, this is a 5 volt fan, and it uses 0.18 amps or 180 milliamps of current. So 12 volt fans are also pretty common. They are going to require an external power supply. In this video, we will be powering this fan directly using the Arduino's 5 volt supply. But we do have a separate video in our tutorial series about Arduino projects that require external power. So again, if you Googled it and found this tutorial for controlling a fan with an Arduino, you are going to need to check the specs of your fan and the steps you need to take might be slightly different depending on the type of fan you have. In this video, we will also just be showing you how to do on-off control using a button and the Arduino's digital write command. If you would like to control the speed of the fan using the Arduino's analog write command and what is called a PWM or pulse width modulation signal, you will need to check if your fan, fan is PWM compatible because some of them are not. So again, when you buy the fan online, make sure you read the description and find out if the fan is PWM compatible if you need to do variable speed. But if not, and you are okay with just on off control, then we will switch over to the computer to take a look at the code and the circuit diagram to do that with the Arduino. Switching over to the computer, we can take a look at the circuit in a simulation program called Tinkercad, which is a free online Arduino simulator. You can find a tutorial about this in our Arduino playlist, again, linked in the description of this video. First, we have a button, which I will go over quickly because they are covered earlier in our tutorial series. The button is bridging the middle gap in the breadboard. We have one side of the button connected to ground through a 10 kilo ohm pull down resistor. That side is also connected to Arduino pin 2. And the other side of the button is connected to the power bus on the breadboard, which is in turn connected to 5 volts on the Arduino. So in this configuration, the button, the input voltage on this pin, will be low by default when the button is not pressed and it will go high when the button is pressed. To control the fan, which we are representing with this DC motor because Tinkercad does not have a fan part, but the connections are the same, we need a part called a transistor. And we need this because if you remember earlier in the video when we looked at the specs on the fan, it requires 180 milliamps of current. And that is more than the individual pins on the Arduino can provide directly. So if you have gotten started with some earlier Arduino tutorials, you are probably used to driving LEDs with the Arduino pins directly, and it can provide enough current to do that. But things like motors and fans and pumps generally require hundreds of milliamps of current, even for small motors. And again, these pins cannot provide that directly. So we use a part called a transistor, which acts sort of like a control valve to control current flowing from some bigger power source. In this case, that is going to be the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. But for something like a 12 volt fan, it could be an external 12 volt power supply. And again, we have another video about external power supplies in our Arduino tutorial series. So you can check that out if you have a higher voltage fan. This one is low enough voltage that we can power, sorry, low enough voltage and low enough current because you can only get about up to about an amp of current out of the Arduino's 5 volt pin, but even that is pushing it. So for projects with multiple fans, even if they are all 5 volt, you will probably need an external 5 volt power supply. Again, we cover that more in our power supply video. For this one, we are using a type of transistor called an N channel MOSFET 
to control that power from the Arduino's 5 volt pin. If we zoom in on the MOSFET, we will see it has three pins called the gate, drain, and source. It is important to make sure each one of these pins is in their own row in the breadboard, so don't put the MOSFET in the breadboard like this, or those three pins are going to be shorted together. And looking at those connections, the gate is the control pin that is going to be connected to one of the Arduino pins. I am using pin nine. The drain is going to connect to the negative wire on the fan and the source is going to connect to the ground bus on the breadboard. The positive wire on the fan is then going to go over to the power bus on the breadboard, which again is connected to the Arduino's five volts. So in this configuration, this allows current to flow out of the Arduino's five volt pin through the fan, back through the negative wire, into the drain pin, out the source pin, and back to ground on the breadboard, but it is not actually drawing any current out of the Arduino's pin. It's just reading the voltage on this gate pin, but the high current that actually powers the fan is coming from the Arduino's five volt supply and not from pin nine. Now opening up the code to take a look, the nice thing about this circuit is that the code to control it is very simple. It's pretty much identical to what you would use to control an LED with a button. The only difference in the physical circuit is that again, we have this transistor in there because the Arduino pin cannot provide enough current to drive the motor directly. But if we were just driving an LED with the Arduino pin directly, the code would be exactly the same. We just declare three variables. We have two for the pins we're using, one for the fan pin and one for the button pin. We have a variable for the button state. In our setup function, we declare the fan pin as an output and the button pin as an input. And then in the loop function, again, all of this should look familiar if you've seen our previous tutorials about LEDs and buttons. We use the digital read command to read the button state. And then we have an if else statement where we detect if the button state is high, meaning the button is pressed. We are going to turn the fan on by setting the fan pin high. Else, if the button is not pressed, we are going to set the fan pin low and turn the fan off. If we run the simulation in Tinkercad, we will see the same behavior that we saw at the beginning of the video with the physical Arduino. The motor or fan is not spinning when the button is not pressed as indicated by the zero RPM here. And when I hold the button down, the fan turns on. While the fan is being controlled by a button here, remember that you could control it with any other sensor. A temperature sensor is a good example because you could make a basic thermostat and have the fan turn on when you exceed a certain temperature, but you could use any of the other sensors that we cover in our Arduino tutorial series like a PIR sensor or an ultrasonic distance sensor. One final note about using these fans. Note that, again, this is a brushless DC fan, and for the two-wire fans, it is tempting to think of them as equivalent to brushed DC motors because the circuit to control them with a MOSFET is basically the same. But the difference is that this fan will not run in reverse if I reverse the wires. So we see if I connect the power and ground wires just directly to the Arduino's five volts, the fan spins and I can feel airflow towards my hand here. But if I reverse those wires, for a regular brushed DC motor, I would just expect the motor to spin in reverse. But if I reverse them here, we see that the fan actually doesn't spin at all. So we're not gonna get into the details in this video, but brushless motors have some additional control electronics inside them. They are a little more complicated than the simpler brushed motors. And in this case, you can see that reversing the power does not reverse the direction that the fan spins. So that means you aren't going to be able to reverse the direction of airflow. Normally, for cooling applications, that doesn't matter. You just have one direction that you want the air to flow in. That matters more for something like a robot where you might want to switch the direction of a motor so the robot can drive in forward or reverse. Again, usually doesn't matter for a fan, just something to consider when you are mounting the fan in your project that you have it oriented so air is blowing in the direction you want it to. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful for many other Arduino tutorials, as well as cool science projects you can do with an Arduino. Again, check out the links in the video description. And for over a thousand other projects you can do in all areas of science, not just Arduino projects, 
check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.